Garden Graffiti, Garden Graffiti, Garden Graffiti, Garden Graffiti. Hey friends, good to see you. Today we're going to talk about raised beds versus in-ground gardening and the pros and cons of both. As you will see, there are some clear delineations where one type of garden is just clearly better. But for a lot of these categories, the best option will completely depend on your particular situation. I'll break this up into different categories like cost, water usage, and comfort to compare and contrast these two types of gardens. I will discuss every possible scenario I can think of. Some of these might not apply to you, but I'm going to try to cover everything so everyone is covered. All right, let's go. Let's first talk about comfort slash ergonomics. It's pretty clear raised beds are the winner of this one. In-ground gardens, as their name entails, are in the ground. So to work your garden, you need to sit really low or bend over. With a raised bed, you drastically reduce the amount of bending you need to do because your garden is higher up from the ground. Common sense, right? With my raised beds, I would regularly bring out a chair and was able to plant or dig things at a very comfy level. You can even sit on your raised bed as I will be doing with mine. I talk a lot about this, but by making working in the garden easier and more comfortable, I contend it makes us want to do it more. Also for the elderly or people with mobility issues, raised beds just tend to be easier. Obviously it depends on the specific mobility issue, but bending over more always just sucks. Now, just one small ripple with this. Some plants like tomatoes and corn grow to get very tall. When we work with them day in and day out, pruning and whatnot, the extra height of the raised bed won't help. In fact, it may hinder your ability to get to the top of your tall plant. When they're tiny seedlings, yes, it would be easier in a raised bed, but as they grow, you won't need this extra height. I still contend though that most of the things you grow are much easier to access with a raised bed. Okay, next category. Let's talk about cost. In-ground gardens are the clear winner here. Raised beds are expensive. You have to buy the materials for the bed and the soil to fill them. This may sound trivial, but trust me, those costs do add up. Good soil especially costs money. But we also need to clarify the size of your desired garden. If you just want to grow 16 square feet of garden, which is what like a four foot by four foot raised bed is space wise. Yeah, building a raised bed would cost more than doing it in the ground, but one raised bed and soil won't be insanely expensive. Now, if you wanted 640 square feet of garden space, which is the equivalent of 40 of those four by four beds. Yeah, this would be pretty expensive and, and probably prohibitive cost wise for most. My friend Brad, for example, is a market gardener in Richmond, Virginia. He grows a lot of food because he sells it. He grows in the ground because paying for that many beds in soil would just wipe out his profits. Okay, let's move to water next. Specifically, how does each type of garden influence our water needs? Between raised beds and in-ground gardening, which one is better? Well, it depends. Raised beds drain better. Because they're off the ground, the sides dry faster. A plant can essentially drown if it gets too much water, so raised beds are great in super heavy rainy places to safeguard against this. So raised beds don't retain as much moisture. Awesome? Not necessarily. If we live in a dry place, a place that doesn't get a lot of rain, like Southern California where I used to live, this is a bummer. In dry places, we don't want to get rid of moisture, we want to hold on to every last drop and love it and savor it. In-ground beds retain more water than raised beds. So the final verdict on in-ground gardens versus raised beds for water needs, it's a draw. It completely depends on your situation. Okay, let's get into soil. The soil in raised beds, because it's higher off the ground, heats up faster than an in-ground garden. So if you live in a place that gets cold, a place that has a true winter season, raised beds will allow you to plant earlier in the spring than your neighbors with in-ground gardens. Point for raised beds. And speaking of being higher up off the ground, in a raised bed, you won't step on your plants like you easily can with an in-ground garden. This can kill your plants, but it also compacts our soil. And we don't want our soil compacted. We want our soil to be light and fluffy so roots can easily move through it. So to avoid stepping on your plants and compacting your soil, raised beds, again, get the edge. And while we're talking about the importance of not stepping on your plants, raised beds do a better job of preventing pets and pests from stepping on your plants or getting into your garden. Obviously, some animals can still jump up, but having a bed high off the ground does a much better job of keeping dogs, rabbits, and other critters out. Point to raised beds again. What about the quality of the soil of an in-ground bed versus a raised bed? Well, this kind of depends on the soil quality of your yard. 
you can and you should get a soil test to see if you're deficient of anything. If the soil in your yard is great for growing, party, go for it. But of course, some yards don't have the best soil. Maybe there's too much clay or the soil's too rocky, etc., etc. With a raised bed, you don't have to worry about any of this because you're bringing in soil. If you get the good stuff, which you absolutely should, by the way, you will know unequivocally that your soil is just ready to go. But then of course, we circle back to cost and this costs more. So for soil quality, there's no clear answer. The answer is it depends. Okay, what's next? Let's talk weeds. What type of garden has less weeds? In my opinion, raised beds slightly win this one. Native soil, the soil from your yard just has more weed seeds because that's how nature works. When you bring in soil for raised beds, it will have significantly less weeds because they formulated to have less weeds. And if you set up your raised bed properly and lay down cardboard and, or landscape fabric, this will prevent weeds from popping up. Now, you will still eventually get weeds in a raised bed. The wind will blow in seeds and birds will poop seeds on your bed. That happens, but having your bed higher up from the ground reduces this spread. Also, in raised beds, if you adhere to square foot gardening methods and, and plant in an orderly fashion, it will be very easy to spot your weeds. But to be fair, you can still plant intelligently and receive the same benefit in the ground if you do everything right. So in closing, I would still say you get less weeds in a raised bed garden. What about difficulty? In other words, what type of garden is easier to set up? The winner here would be in-ground gardening. With raised beds, you need to learn how to build raised beds, which usually involves tools and saws and building plans. It's not rocket science, but it involves more than simply putting things in the ground. Now, there are many easy to assemble raised bed kits, but you still need to fill these raised beds, which of course takes time. So boom, another point goes to in-ground gardening. What about gardening in unconventional locations? In other words, which type of gardening system allows you to put a garden anywhere? In this case, Raised beds clearly win. To accomplish in-ground gardening, you need ground. But with a raised bed, you could garden on a rooftop, on a patio, or the top of a parking garage. Point to raised beds. How about longevity? Well, this one depends. If you're making your raised beds out of wood, even with the most long-lasting wood like cedar, it will eventually, after a number of years, decompose and require repair or replacement. You won't have this problem with in-ground gardening. One small exception, if you make your bed out of something long lasting, like these galvanized steel beds my friend Kevin from Epic Gardening sells, this isn't as much of a concern. And if you wanna buy those, I have a link with a discount in the description of this video. So for longevity, I'd give the edge to in-ground gardening unless you make them out of material that doesn't break down. Now, last but not least, I wanna talk about aesthetics. In other words, which one looks better? This is completely subjective. Personally, I'm a huge fan of raised beds. I enjoy how orderly and uniform multiple beds look in a row, but this is just my personal taste. I've also seen incredible in-ground setups, so if you dig those more, by all means, go for it. There's one small advantage to in-ground beds I should mention though. With raised beds, you're sort of confined to, to the geometry of your bed you know, usually squares or rectangles. But with in-ground gardening, you can get much more creative with your planting scheme. You can do cool, weird curves or circles and other things that would be pretty difficult in a raised bed. So for aesthetics, I think it's once again a draw, but worth mentioning that you can plant in unconventional formations within ground planting. So let's recap. Raised beds are more comfortable because they're higher up off the ground. There's less bending with a raised bed, but in-ground gardens are way less expensive. You don't need to buy materials for your beds, nor do you need to spend as much filling those beds. Raised beds have better drainage and are ideal in places where it rains a lot or can rain a lot. In-ground beds are better at holding water and are therefore better in dry climates that don't get a lot of rain. Raised beds allow us to get a jump on the growing season because the soil in the bed heats up faster. In-ground beds are easier to set up and you don't need extensive woodworking or building knowledge to construct them. On a related note, in-ground beds take a lot less time to set up. Raised beds have less weeds because they're higher up off the ground and aren't using native soil. Raised beds also make it easy to not step on your plants. They also do the same for pets and pests. In-ground gardens don't break down over time like wooden raised beds will. You don't need to repair or replace them as you do raised beds. You can put a raised bed garden anywhere, on the top of a building or even a patio, but are confined to certain shapes 
usually squares or rectangles. In-ground beds allow you to plant in interesting formations and really get creative with planting schemes. So that's it, my friends. I want to add just one small thing to bookend all of this. After listening to this list, I hope you know that you can still break the rules. If you value a particular aspect um, for your garden more than others, you are allowed to weigh that more heavily and give it priority. Let me give you an example. I learned a garden and built a garden when I lived in Los Angeles. If you don't know, LA is a desert. LA is dry and it hardly ever rains. As far as water retention goes, it would have been much smarter for me to do in-ground beds, but I love the look of raised beds so, so much that I made raised beds. Ask yourself what's most important for you from all this stuff. Maybe as in my case, aesthetics is super important, but maybe you're a market gardener and growing a boatload of food is the priority and you absolutely can't pay for all those materials. Awesome, plant it in the ground. It all depends on you. Well, my friends, I hope this episode was helpful. Pretty, pretty please subscribe to my channel and send this video to people who want to start a garden. Okay, talk to you soon.